Hey there, this is Tom with another daily walk from ourwalkingchrist.com. And uh, today I kind of wanted to talk about uh, uh, oh, Bible tracks. Wow, Bible tracks. Um, you know, those crazy little things, people litter all over the place. And, uh, you know, I was having a, a discussion with somebody the other day, and I, I really want to meet somebody that came to salvation from a Bible track. I mean, sure, I get you were chatting with somebody, somebody that you knew, they handed you something to read later on. But please, if you came to faith because you found a Bible track sitting on the ground, let me know. I really want to figure out why. I can't comprehend it. All right, particularly if you're a waitress, and you serve some guys that were probably loud. And instead of leaving you a tip, they left you a fold that looked like a $20 barrel. You pull it up, you're so excited. You open it up, it says, disappointed? You wouldn't be if you had Jesus in your life. <sighs> so sometimes I like going into churches, confession. I like looking for funny Bible tracks. I like tearing them apart. The horrible theology in these tracks is so comical that if they weren't meant to be serious, I'd be laughing. But I'm not. I read one the other day. It says, you are invited. You have to do nothing. Just accept the invitation. It's like the first sentence. And, uh, this young man, I said, uh, I just put the thing down right there. I said, oh, it's getting late. I said, you know, I want you to study a parable. Find a parable. The parable, the wedding feast. And we'll chat about this later. Of course, if you're not familiar with the parable of the wedding feast, the king is throwing a big banquet and he ends up, um, he ends up inviting all of his nobles, you know, all of the, all of the people that, uh, uh, the, the kings, all of the, all the good people in the town. He invites all these people to come to his uh, banquet. Some of them made excuses. They didn't want to come. One guy got married. One guy bought new land. One guy got some new oxen. Kind of like getting a new car, really. Um, maybe a new computer um, they're like oh we don't want to come so the king comes back he says go out into the highways and the byways and beckon the people to come in so uh, guy does that and a bunch of people in there but there's a little thing you had to come in you had to wear wedding clothes which the king actually provided so he's walking through and he sees a guest and the guest is not wearing the wedding clothes that were provided. He says, I don't need to wear wedding clothes. I came, I was invited, and I came. King says, tie him up and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The parable ends by saying, many are called and few are chosen. Accept the invitation. You don't need to do anything. Yeah. That's a biblically sound Bible track. Arminianism junk to try and get people to simply pray a little prayer. But you don't got to change anything. You don't have to repent. Repentance is not a thing that is generally in these Bible tracks. No repentance. No lordship. No accepting that you are a sinner. Just pray a little prayer. It's kind of like, I've done a lot of work in children's ministries, and you know, I remember this one teacher at one ministry, he used to do a lot of work in, and man, she'd be up there going, who would like to burn in hell? It's hot like a stove, and ah, scare all these kids, they don't wanna go to hell. Oh, if you want perfect, peace in heaven raise your hand and of course all these kids are raising their hand all you need to do is fold your eyes and hold your hands and 
you know literally they would say fold your eyes and cross your hands and close your hands or whatever um oh my lands easy believism is the theology what that's called it is when people want to just collect numbers oh we had 37 kids except jesus after you told them if they didn't they'd burn in hell yeah but you know what all these messages seem to forget these bible tracks seem to forget a lot of these soft teachings seem to forget is that yes the salvation is a free salvation but yes the salvation requires repenting god accepts us as we are he does not expect us to stay that way and unfortunately this mass reproduction of easy believism has led people to this view that says all you need to do is pray a prayer they don't even talk about repenting they don't talk about challenging your sin they don't talk about any of this stuff all they're talking about is praying a prayer and a little prayer at one point in time is not how one may get saved now salvation is not works absolutely not there is nothing else i need to do there's nothing i bring to the table and i'm kind of getting off on salvation because i'm so frustrated with these bible tracts i remember i was out at a lunch one day with a gentleman and we had our, our lunch we go to leave and this guy instead of leaving a tip now i left a tip he didn't leave a tip he's like it's their job but he left them a bible tract instead like yeah great and then we're walking back to the hotel we were actually uh, uh colleagues at a at a business we both worked for remote locations so first time we actually uh, met up with each other in person so we're walking back to the hotel and like every few feet you know he's dropping a uh he's dropping a track on the ground i'm like dude you're littering oh no i'm not littering i'm i'm leaving these so somebody can get saved i'm thinking the only thing i'm thinking is the poor city worker that's got to walk around town picking up all these bible tracks i promise you the end of the day if you're just dropping bible tracks all over he's going to be cursing god for all these people littering in the town stop it you go out to dinner as a christian you leave a tip if you want to talk to your waitress about jesus then by all means chat with your waitress about jesus don't leave a bible track about it though save the bible tracks for you've had a great conversation with somebody and you want to leave them with something light but please make sure it's a theologically sound bible track not one that says you don't have to repent you don't have to do anything all you need to do is accept the invitation you know and there's an element of that that's certainly true we need to accept christ in our heart absolutely but it doesn't end there that's the point i'm trying to get to and that's what i'm trying to say these bible tracks i have seen some of them that are okay most of them are theologically weak sadly a few of them are flat out manipulative some of them target children to manipulate them and our god our god is not a weak god that we have to manipulate others to get them to come to him all right rather than leaving bible tracts laying around why don't we all stand up as people and go and talk with people about christ not offensively not judgmentally but i think that the best model of christianity is that people know where you are people know where you stand they know you're a believer they know you're a christian 
and you're just the nicest guy, you're not judgmental, because I promise you, at some point in time, if they know you, and they know you're not judgmental, and they know you're a Christian, and you really, uh, you really do focus on keeping your life um, kind of under control, then when their life spins out of control, you will very possibly be the first person they talk to. That's why Peter says, be prepared in season and out of season to provide a defense for the hope that is within you. So, all of that being said, rather than hand out Bible tracts or litter all over the town with them or leave tracts for your waitress or slip tracts in your co-worker's desk chair or whatever else, I think that most of these tracks are not biblically sound. There are some that are fine. But I think that tracks generally are not a way to bring somebody to Christ. And if you were saved by a track, exclusively a track, you just happen to find it laying around, you read it and hallelujah, angels were singing and you accepted Jesus, please let me know. I'm just genuinely curious. Are these being effective? And is the theology within them, can you overcome it? That's my thoughts. So, a little unusual of a daily walk. Maybe a little controversial. That's okay with me. I don't mind standing on what I believe the Bible teaches. And certainly, I can be corrected. Absolutely, if you think it does, let me know. This has been Tom with A Daily Walk, ourwalkinchrist.com.